And so in, in that franchise renewal, Comcast wired about 110 homes in Northern Conway. So that was a big step. And here we are again, but with the help of the state, some state funding and Comcast funding, last summer Comcast finished building out virtually the entire town. There are a few homes in Conway that don't have cable access. Um, and in general, they're homes that you would not expect to have cable access. Um, I can give you an example is uh, Warren Harris's farm that's out on Pine Hill Road, right on the edge of the discontinued road that then goes um, into northern Conway. Um, and no one is living there, no one has lived there for a number of years. And it's about a mile and a half from the next house. And it was hard to be too angry at Comcast for not wiring that house. Uh, they actually wired many houses that I was surprised at. There were a few other homes they didn't wire, and all of those homes decided they wanted Comcast enough that they ponied up the money themselves and paid Comcast to wire them. And so right now we are virtually 100% wired, which, which is incredible. Uh, and so my hope is, and I'll say, Thank you, Comcast. You know that, that, and to give you an example of why that's generous, in, in my opinion, anyway, um, the state's goal was that all of the towns in Western Mass that didn't have a lot, that had a significant number of homes that didn't have access. There were about nine towns that that made the criteria of having a significant number of homes without broadband. Comcast's commitment to the state was to raise them to meet the state average of connectivity. And the rest of the state was wired to about 96% of the homes in the town have access to their cable, whatever, we, whatever their cable channel is. And so 4% of the homes in Comcast, they could have not wired 4% of the homes in Comcast, and they would have met their commitment to the state. And the state said, this is how much money we'll give you to do it. And they could have left about 40 homes then not wired. So to me, it was very significant that they wired virtually 100% of the homes. So our cable, our cable access committee, cable advisory committee is me, Jonathan Barkin, Bill Arduzer, and Ron Hawks, who's not here. And um, we've been working with a lawyer who's just arrived, uh, Bill Solomon, and uh, and and so yes. so Bill is a lawyer that we were fortunate to discover ten years ago when we were writing our previous franchise agreement. We had gone through our current franchise agreement and liked things and didn't like things, and decided to read a lot of other towns' franchise agreements, and we easily could break down franchise agreements between those we liked and those we didn't like. And then we discovered all the ones we liked, all were bills. <laughs> and so we called him up and said, we have a franchise agreement, but could you look at it? And he said, I'll just write one for you. And, and he, he created the franchise agreement and negotiated it with Comcast. And so it was clear that we wanted to have Bill do it again. And almost brought him out of retirement. And yeah. 10 years from now, I don't know what the state of <coughs> cable access is going to be, um, but we might not be able to get Bill to do it one more time. So. Well, I should say, I would, just the last three months, I've been doing licenses that end in 2030. And that's just like a scary date to put down 2030. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I, I'm not that great at math, but if I was, I, I would be worried. <laughs> well, then ours will be one of them. Yeah. Uh, and so, so that's our cable access channel. Our, our Bill, Bill Solomon is our lawyer. Um, we have been fortunate for the last couple of years to work with uh, Eileen Leahy from Comcast. I'll have, she, she'll want to stand up and say a few words in a couple of minutes. And then 
our cable, our ca <laughs> so there's, there's really two important pieces to Comcast from our perspective. And one is, they provide you with cable television, internet, telephone, and I guess you sell home security services. Do. I don't know a lot about that side of it, but they, they do it all. Um, but the other piece is, they fund, uh, as required by federal law, a small amount of their cable subscriptions, not the internet, not the phone, just the cable subscriptions, a small percentage of their cable subscriptions, they give back to the town to fund community access television. And so, oh, a dozen years ago or so, Deerfield, Sunderland, Waitley, and Conway formed Frontier Community Access Television, and now it's run by Chris Collins, and, uh, and uh, Kevin Murphy is our contact at Frontier High School, and John Boshan, and Dan... Denton Thompson. Denton. D Dan Denton? Yes. And I don't know your name. Uh, so, th so these guys work for FCAT, and you will see them running around carrying microphones at our town meetings. Uh, John made the wonderful film that you may have seen uh, of, of the Festival of the Hills recently. He, he, uh, he recorded uh, Mark Fortier when Mark Fortier gave a talk at the, at the Historical <coughs> Society recently. If you haven't seen that, you've got to watch it. And so most of those things, although they are shown on cable channels, and that's channel 12, channel 15, and channel 23, we have three channels on cable television, um, but they also are available on our video on demand channel, which is through uh, YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, look up FCAT Media, FCAT Media, all one word, and search for FCAT Media, you will see all of the, the programs that FCAT produces. And if you look for ones from FCAT Media Conway, you will see all the ones from Conway. And, and you probably will really enjoy a lot of them. I really encourage you to watch the one that John made of uh, Mark Fortier's talk. You will enjoy the one about the Festival of the Hills. You'll enjoy the one about the 250th uh, celebration we had last year. Anyway, so, so FCAT is just a, such a significant part of Comcat's offering. And, uh, and we went from 10 years ago, we had we received zero money from, from Comcat to fund our, our community access television, and it's been going up, and we hope that they will continue to be generous. So this year, the big hope that we have is we would like to connect the Conway Elementary School down to the studio that's down now in Sunderland Town Hall, and we'll do that by connecting the Conway Elementary School down to the Conway Town Office and connecting the Town Hall so that the school can produce local programs and the programs that are done at Town Hall could also be shown on television and shown live. So that's, that's one of our hopes that we'll be able to uh, have Comcast uh, help us do. So, so do you want to say something, Bill? Just a few words. Uh, uh, yeah, and then and I would <coughs> like to go eventually. And then, and then we'll open it up for you guys. Great, thank you. Thanks for those few kind words. Uh, it's good to be here. I am Bill Solomon, the Special Cable Council. Um, I just wanted to make, and Eileen, great to see you. Thank you, thank you for coming. Uh, uh, you know, Eileen being here represents what's great about cable television licensing, is that it began at a time where there were smaller companies, and those companies wanted to be in the public way. And they came to the town because the town owns and controls, maintains, insures, cleans, protects public ways. And they were able to get permission to be in that public way. And then they had government affairs representatives who have relationships with the town. And uh, I always say if you ask Google or Facebook or Apple or someone to come Disney to come to, uh, to Conway Town Hall in one week and meet with us to discuss some of the telecommunication cable issues, no one would show up. Uh, so it's a product of a different age, uh, but yet it's the best of that age. What the Cable Act does incentivizes both sides, the town and the company, to figure out what matters. The town's supposed to figure out is 
future cable related community needs and interests. And Conway, as you know, and be here today, takes them very seriously. That's why you're here today. Now, this license will be, uh, we expect, uh, and we think is good for both parties, a 10 year license. Um, and so this, together with the earlier and continuing ascertainment, it's called, of the town, is the public's chance, it's your chance to be heard. So I just always make it. Uh, someone could be in a meeting and someone get up and say something and other people say, well, I'm not going to repeat that. I can't stand those meetings where everyone says the same thing. And then, you know, we could, let's, we'll, we'll meet with Eileen tomorrow. We'll be discussing the license. And uh, Eileen could say, well, you know, we'd say something's important. And Eileen could say, well, gee, only one person stood up and talked about it. So don't be shy. Uh, what's great is Eileen's here because Comcast listens and takes seriously what those needs are. Because they figured out to their credit. As you, it's an excellent cable company, that uh, the better the local community television is, the better their program is, and the better able they are to maintain their position and to compete. So with that said, please feel free to uh, discuss any interest with respect to cable. There are certain things the town and the committee does not control, programming of the PEG access, rates, or internet. You're free to comment on it, but we don't have, your committee in town doesn't have control over that. So share your thoughts and help the town achieve, together with Comcast, a, gr a great license for the next 10 years. So you want to take a Good evening, everyone. I'm Eileen Lady um, from Comcast. I'm the Senior Manager of Government Affairs. I've been with Comcast for almost five years now. Prior to that, I was in private practice in Hoyt, Massachusetts. I was an attorney, still an attorney, but not in that capacity for Comcast. Um, thank you for coming out tonight. Um, I enjoy these public hearings because, as Bill said, it gives me an opportunity to hear what the people in town, what's important to them, what concerns they have. I'm really here in a listening capacity, so I'll just be sitting there listening to what everyone has to say, and then, you know, I, I, we take that back and you know, we can discuss it at our next meeting. So just you know, we've been working on this license for over a year now. Our meeting started last August. So um, you know, there's a lot of work goes and a lot of time goes into this, and a lot of hard work by the cable committee members and by Attorney Solomon to get the right franchise for everybody. And it's really important that the franchise we we bring really fits the needs of your town. It's it's the cable related needs of the town, and those needs are different from every single town. So no two franchises are going to look alike because no two towns are alike and the needs of one town are gonna be different from another town. So that's really important why we have these, why the law mandates a public hearing just so we can hear what you believe those needs are. So thank you for coming out tonight and I look forward to hearing from everybody. So again, I do out, you know, just a couple more words about FCAT. I mean, we and Comcast both wanna keep a lot of subscribers in Conway, especially subscribers watching cable television. Cable television is what funds FCAT. And so, so we, we love it that you guys aren't, you know, some of you are, are not just going on the internet, that you're keeping your cable subscription, and that's what funds FCAT. So I really encourage you to think about that. Um, I have one more complete, uh, go ahead, do you want to talk about FCAT? I, I want to talk about That would be great. My name is Chris Collins. I'm the director of Frontier Community Access Television. I'm especially proud to be the director of this organization and to work with these fine people. Uh, Kevin Murphy, is, as Bob mentioned, is our liaison to Frontier Regional School. We have a lot of kids that come through FCAT through Kevin. And as a matter of fact, I would say probably 40% of our staff and volunteers are Frontier, either graduates or students. And Kevin does a tremendous job connecting us to that school. It, Toward that end, I'd like to read into the record uh, a letter that I received today from a young man named Matt Carlson. Matt Carlson is our, he is our technical coordinator, which, which means when I get into trouble with computers, I call Matt and Matt fixes it, basically. But Matt currently is a freshman, freshman or sophomore? Sophomore, sophomore. sophomore I'm sorry, at uh, Bentley College. And he wanted me to, to read this letter into the record that he sent to us uh, to express how important FCAT's been to him. And uh, when you hear the letter, you understand why. Uh, Frontier Community Access Television has been the, most, the best opportunity I've ever taken advantage of. My journey with FCAT started in 2013 when my grandfather brought me to the annual open house. I had decided I didn't want to play basketball in the winter anymore, 
and my mother told me that I had to find something to do, so she decided I should check FCAT out. As a 12-year-old, I was amazed <coughs> by all of the high-tech equipment that I saw and was interested in learning more. I went back to the back of the studio in the control room and started talking to a few of the producers about volunteering on Mondays after school. Everyone was very welcoming. I decided to go for it, and frankly, the decision has changed my life. I spent the next year coming to FCAT multiple times per week, learning as much as I could, and on my 14th birthday, I got a paid position at the station. Making money as a 14-year-old is nice, but the real value of my time spent at FCAT during 2013 and 2014 were the skills I learned from Doug Finn, then the director, my predecessor. I learned to operate almost every piece of equipment in that building, edit video with Premiere, create special effects and after effects, and build graphics in Photoshop, many of these skills I use on a daily basis to this day. I built a foundation of technical knowledge that primed me for every single job I've had in my entire life. I ran the Frontier Auditorium for most of the time I was there because of an introduction I made at FCAT. I worked in IT at Frontier because of a recommendation of a teacher that saw me at every sporting event setting up gear. I recently got a job as technical director of Watertown Cable TV because of my extensive experience at FCAT, and he now has a job as software engineer at Castus, which happens to be the company that runs our server. Because of the connections, I made calling tech support on FCAT's behalf. Like I said, FCAT changed my life. I know this opportunity is available to anyone who has the drive to take advantage of it and realize its full potential. The reason why I'm especially proud to read this letter is because we talk a lot about cable television, we talk a lot about programming, and we're very active in the community covering government, sporting events at Frontier. But the most important thing I think we do, and what Kevin does, is connect this cable access station to the local high school students, the next generation of video producers. It's an incredibly important part of what we do, and I don't think there's a cable access station in Franklin County or in Western Mass that has the kind of connection to the schools that we have. We want to foster that more. We want to maintain and strengthen that relationship. The only way to do that is get the best possible contract we can and the most amount of revenue that we can. You've probably been reading in the news about some concerns related to the FCC and some rule changes that threaten to defund the complete industry of local access. It's incredibly important that we maintain this piece of community. Because quite frankly, folks, if you notice, there's no local reporters here covering this event. Why is that? Because local media has backed off of covering what I call the hinterlands, the small towns. That's the role we're stepping into now. More and more, people in communities like Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Whaley depend on our organization to tell them what's going on in their community and their government. The only way we're able to do that is by having the operating funds to continue bringing people like Kevin, John, Alec, and Dan in on a daily and weekly basis to tell these stories. The bottom line is it comes down to telling community stories. That's what we do best. That's what we strive to do better than any access station in the country. And I would put our record up against anybody doing media today of our type. So I thank you all for coming out. I appreciate the support we've gotten from Conway. You're the smallest of our four towns, but in many ways you're the most special. There's two of my board members our select board members, and you have tremendous representation on our FCAT board. Without Bob, we couldn't do what we do. And we thank you for coming out. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your world and tell those stories that are the most important, I think, to us all. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Can I add some stuff, too? Is it, is I would love it. Is it open floor? Hey, this is <laughs> open mic. Uh, Kevin Murphy, a, a teacher at Frontier Regional School and a longtime outreach coordinator with the students. Um, w one thing that I um, want to echo is what Chris had said, is, is it's really important for these kids to have this outside of school exposure. Uh, we do have a, a, a video teacher and a studio there, not, not related at all to what I do. Um, but it's different, you know, they're, they're kind of doing stuff inside of school and then it's the end of it. The students that really make a difference in the industry are the ones that get out in the field and actually get their hands dirty with all the wires and the you know the and interacting with community members. So it's really fun to watch kids interact at town meeting with uh, select board members and just be like, hey, how's it going? And and, and it really and the kids watch a lot of those um, meetings 
and learn a lot about their town at the same time, which is really interesting component as well. But um, beyond that, what we do we do a lot of is showcasing you know the community uh, what the stu students are doing in school. You know the um, the plays, the concerts, the sporting events, um, the musical. These are all really important things that the kids. Um, you know, work hard at, and when they get to showcase that, they're, they're, they're definitely proud. And a lot of the community members get to see that as well, you know, um, that don't know what's going on in the schools. Um, and so it's a good opportunity for, for everybody to kind of keep together and, and joined. And um, like, like uh, Chris said, local media, 22 News, they cover all the sports in the lower state and they never really come up this way so it's nice to see that uh, the kids see themselves on TV um, you know more so than not um, up here in this area and I, oh, interesting thing I was also thinking of one of our highest rate of um, community student volunteers is from Conway remember John Harrison and uh, oh was the, this is like a handful of kids and currently one of our our hardest um, volunteers Megan self is, is a Conway resident so we get a lot of Conway kids for some reason um, working with uh, FCAT on a lot of times. So that's really interesting. That 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 that's a significant thing. But yeah, that's all. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. So while we're talking about FCAT, one more thing. We do have a town meeting, special town meeting, this coming Monday, Monday night, 7.30, in the gym. Uh, so you will see some of these guys up there running the cameras, taping our, taping our special town meeting. The big issue for this town meeting is gonna be funding the, uh, the, the rest of building our town garage. We've funded the beginning of the town garage. This is gonna be looking at funding the rest of our town garage. It's a very important special town meeting. And, uh, and FCAP will be there taping it. What I love when I go to these town meetings is whenever you hook a bunch of technical stuff together, all this complicated equipment, something doesn't work. And it's to watch these guys try to figure out what's not working and how do they fix it because of how important it is to get these town meetings right. And so it's, so you'll see them all scurrying around, you know, the soundboard isn't working or there's something or other that always is a little funny and, uh, and, and they always figure it out. Uh, so this is really your meeting. It's your opportunity to stand up and, and tell Comcast, tell Eileen uh, what you think of Comcast, what their service, uh, ways that they could serve you better. Um, like, like I think Bill said, this is not really the opportunity to stand up and complain about price. Price has nothing to do with our franchise agreement. We're really interested in things that we can do in our franchise agreement. This is not the opportunity to stand up and talk about the programming that they offer. It's not part of our franchise agreement. There may be stations you like or stations you don't like. This is not really the place you can tell Comcast that. If you want to stand up and tell Eileen that, that would be interesting for her to know. But it's not part of our franchise agreement. So who would like to go first? So. Hi, good evening. My name is Paulette Lovechuk. And I'm here tonight as both a teacher at the school and a resident of Conway. I live on Matthews Road. And I'd like to voice some enthusiastic support for Comcast to include in any of their upgrades as part of the new 10-year contract extension a connection from the school to the town office, which would then have that connection from there to the TV studio that's connected to Comcast. Um, and this connection, the reason for this, and the reason I think it's very important for the school is that it would allow viewers l uh, access to a live um, recording of any meetings, performances that take place at the school or the town hall. And at the school, these include school committee meetings once a month, town meetings, special town meetings, school events, student performances, special assemblies, 
and visiting performers or speakers that come to our school. So I'm thinking a teacher recently gave a talk during our, what we used to call open house night on um, growth mindset, which is very interesting to all parents to hear about and the wider community to hear what we're focusing on in our school. We had the fire department came in and they gave a wonderful talk about fire safety. That's important to everybody in the community. So that's why I feel it would be very important to do that. Currently, viewers must wait for a pre-recorded tape to be made available if there is one to view. Um, we'd also like, we would need with this, some equipment for the school. That would include a camera, tripod, and what they call a shotgun microphone. And that would enable the school to film its own content. So just thank you for listening to our interest in that and um, for a connection from the school to the town office and for equipment so that we're able to produce something that can be seen live. Thank you. You also like to speak. I'm Lynn Hanley, I live in Shelburne Falls Road, and I am here to complain about Christ because I didn't know that we couldn't complain about Christ, and I don't know where else to go to complain about Christ. Conway raised the price of my communications system $30 last month. I have called everywhere. I have gone up to the office in Greenfield, asked them to explain what is this $30 hike? Why? Am I having it? Nobody can explain it to me. We are signing a $10 contract with a monopoly, and I don't see that we have any control on price. I don't see anywhere in the town you're saying we have no control on what they're going to call charge us, and they have a monopoly to charge us whatever they want. Your address and your contact information, I will get you your answers that you need. Um, 79 Shelburne Falls Road. I've gone up to your store in Greenfield. I have attempted to call your number that I am told I can call if I have a question about my bill. I get a machine that will not allow me to ask questions about the building. So let me let me just take it from there. I'll, I'll tomorrow morning and when I get back to my office, I'll make connection with somebody who will call you and can answer all your questions. I'll make sure that happens. And I just want one other thing, just to clarify. Um, I know you see Comcast as a monopoly because we're the only one here. Yeah. But the franchise, we're not a monopoly, and the franchise is very clear in that language. Anybody can come in and provide cable service to you if they choose to. But what that means is they have to come in and they have to build a cable plant, and it's very expensive. I, you know, I mean, so. So yours is built. Why am I thirty dollars more? Well, because with any kind of business, there's always incurring costs. But I will have someone call you tomorrow and explain why there was a price increase, and it wasn't just in Conway. Across there were price increases across the. Of thirty dollars a month. I can't talk to a, what they were anywhere else. I, I can just say that there were price increases in all across the country. Um, it happened. I will have someone call you and they will just, they can explain to you what those increases are for and why. I would appreciate that because I can't see that they were for And can I just get your phone number if you don't mind so I can, they can call you? 413-369-4617 or 413-369-6036. 6036? Mm-hmm. Okay. No, no, so one thing I can tell you, I, I, you know, I, I mean, I leave this all the time. She does welcome contacts. And normally those contacts do come through me, not by choice, it's just that people in Conway knew who I am, and they, they send me an email, you know, fire and brimstone or whatever, a question. And I forward them to Eileen, and just uh, a couple weeks ago, Steve Golsher, who lives out the Waitley Road, called me up and he said he hadn't chosen, he, he was one of the newly wired folks in town, um, he hadn't chosen to connect at the time. He wanted to connect. He wasn't sure how to contact Comcast to get somebody to connect. When he called the Comcast normal sales line, they said, your road is not wired. 
And so he said he didn't know where to go from there. He wrote me. I call. I, I sent Eileen a note, and and now he's connected. So so it you know it, 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 maybe there should be better ways for you guys to contact. To, you shouldn't have trouble contacting Comcast. Oh, you do. But but it, but if you do, write me an email. Send, call me, and I will send Eileen a note. And I can't promise you, but my experience is they really help out. So, so one of the questions I, I heard was, oh, yeah, one of the questions I heard. What's your name? Tom Burke, yeah. So I'm up on, uh, up on um, uh, Parsons Drive. Uh, so so uh, one of the questions I heard was the, the length of the time for the contract, um, 10 years. Yes. What was the prior contract time? Just a question. So it was a 10-year contract also. So 10 years ago, we negotiated this contract. And we did go through a lot of talk. And we haven't done it quite so much this time over, should we go for a shorter time? Well, what were the options, I guess, so for a shorter time? We can negotiate whatever, you know, it would be negotiated between us and Comcast. To some extent, what are the advantages of going with a shorter contract? At that time, I can tell you, what we were worried about was, so in that contract, Comcast was willing to give us a small number of houses that they would build out, and we said, we're gonna have to wait a whole nother 10 years until we can build out the rest of the town, and build out was paramount. So well, it's putting more cable out that doesn't exist. That's right, that's extending what they call the plant, extending the network, to, so that homes that don't have it, and, and for example, if you go out the Poland Road, you go through Poland Gate, and you get into Southern Conway, the Williamsburg end of town, nobody on the Williamsburg end of town had Comcast service. And yet, in Williamsburg, people right down the road from them, they had Comcast. And so... Two and, miles. <laughs> two, two, mi two miles from my house. Yeah. And so, so, and... A very nice lady, called me up and said, my husband has gotten this great job in Attleboro and we've enrolled our kids in school there, we've put a deposit on a house there and we cannot sell our house. And it almost wasn't a question of money. Without cable, no one will buy your house. And fortunately, Jonathan came to Conway, fell in love with the house and with the promise that Comcast was going to be building out, with, 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 even though it wasn't there at the time, he was willing to take that risk and buy that house. But there was a time, but 10 years ago when we were doing this, there were a lot of people in town that could not sell their house without cable. So, so, th so this year, you know, I mean, we would look to Bill to, to help us negotiate his 10 year the right thing, but the, the, you know, we probably will be negotiating another 10 year contract and because we, we would like the good things in our contract to last for the next 10 years. I mean, there are good things like, like getting PEG funding, getting, getting the funding that we get to run FCAT. Most, we, most towns actually do, just so that you know, most towns have a 10 year contract. There are only a few that have shorter contracts. It's, it's actually less common. And there are reasons why a really short contract is bad. There's a Eileen, what was it, a three-year what period? So with the renewal, how the renewals work under Massachusetts law, three years before your contract, your franchise expires, you have to start the negotiation process. And it started by what we call a 626 letter. So it's just a letter saying, you know, thank you for letting us serve you. Your contract is going to be expiring. We're going to now start the negotiation. You don't start right at that first day of the three years, but that window opens. So if you have a contract that says three years, the moment you sign it, you're getting a 626 letter. Like we're sending that letter out right away, so you're right back at the table, so you're not really getting much accomplished. Um, so that's really one of the biggest things, just because the whole negotiation process is a three-year window. Fair enough, Bob just mentioned. Um, you, you had mentioned, uh, both of you, uh, that, that there are things that uh, the town would like to achieve in a cable license. I have the uh, former cable license, and you know, there's a, a list of roads, as Bob said, that had to be built out together with a relatively low density requirement apart from these roads that had to be built out. So uh, as Eileen mentioned, there, the, the, the negotiations have been going on for a while. 
Um, and you know, some of the issues were discussed uh, by yourself, ma'am. The uh, uh, connecting the school to the town offices, uh, capital expense. Uh, having the signal from the town offices go to the FCAT studio so it can be part of the programming that they put out and they can put captions on and they can edit or they can switch where now it, it, it goes directly to the head end of Comcast and goes out. Together with the capital funding, including as mentioned, funding for school equipment, funding for public educational government, the public and educational run by FCAT, government run by the town of, of, of Conway. Uh, in order to, to get a balance and to achieve that capital funding, a cable company traditionally, and has, has not moved away from that, prefers a, a longer license. So we feel it works well, particularly now for the town. We also think it works well for Comcast, because they tend to view each license in the community on its own finances. It's not as if, well, it's a multi-billion dollar company, they can pay for something. No, they look at each one. So we think a longer license serves the, the, town, the town interest. Now, that license has to work for the town. If the proposal isn't reasonable, and I, I, I'm, I'm confident, I'm sure we're going to get to a fair license that works for both parties. But in theory, if it wasn't reasonable, then, uh, then the town expresses that unhappiness with that license, either expresses it publicly or you know, sends a, a, a preliminary decision to the company saying, well, we're not renewing your license as of now because we, we haven't received the reasonable offer. We're going to have an informal negotiation and get to a deal. But the point is that if, if the license isn't, proposal isn't reasonable well, at the table through negotiations, then the more appropriate response is to say, well, that doesn't work and it needs to work rather than just say, well, let's just do a shorter license and let's take another shot at this in three years. Because in three years, you're never going to be in a better position having done so much work with such good people, <coughs> uh, given the, the, the general circumstances, you'll never be in a better position to get a good, good license than now. So it's like a mortgage. You have, good low, you have good interest rates for a mortgage, take a long-term mortgage. If, if, if you've done the work and we, you can get a good license now, let's, let's get that set for 10 years and not think about having to try to do that in the future. Who else would like to speak? While you're thinking about it, I got a couple emails from people here in town who they wanted me to read. So, so this is my reading them into the record, I guess. So I did think there might be. Oh, should I stand over here? Yeah, so we can. Take them sure. Oh, I have to get my best side in. So, so this was from a fellow named Michael Levine. He lives up on Cricket Hill. Uh, Cricket Hill was a perfect example of a of a neighborhood. In their neighborhood, it was fairly dense. You know, there are houses reasonably near each other, but they were a long way from the center of town, and they were not connected. And uh, and so. They, like, like many of the people in Williamsburg, did not believe that Comcast was actually going to wire them until the Comcast truck started rolling down Whaley Road and rolling down Poland Road, wiring up those houses. And, I, and so, so Michael wrote and he said, I'm sorry I won't be able to make it, but feel free to tell Comcast that being wired with broadband has let my business survive and thrive and grow and I don't know how I survived without it. So I can't tell you how many people have said that kind of thing to me. I, I know that they're an evil monopoly and we, you know, we can talk about them. You know, it, it's hard for me to blame them for being an evil monopoly. It's not, there, there are, there's nothing in their franchise that, that locks anyone else from coming in and building cable. If somebody else came here and wanted to build cable, I mean, and Greenfield is a perfect example. Uh, Greenfield has Comcast, and the town of Greenfield decided to build their own broadband. And they're struggling to get customers, and they're struggling to, to run wires and get some customers. And, you know, it's not my business, I don't know how Comcast is thinking about it, but there's nothing in any of our Comcast franchise agreements that stop Conway, if Conway wanted to build our own broadband, 
or, or you know, another, you know, if we could get somebody else to come in here and offer a competing service. But it's very, very expensive. And it's the reason why in most towns there was only one cable provider. Because <coughs> once a cable provider moves into that town, it's a, no one else has a big interest in it. So. Can you tell me what the average monthly rate is for Comcast? If you're getting computer, phone, and cable, TV? Eileen, do you know? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I can't, we don't give out, I don't have that information. You don't give it out or you don't have it? Well, I, I don't go in and I can't go in and look at people's bills. I mean, they're privacy, privacy rights for a subscriber. So I don't well, know what the average, average. it also depends on what packages, I mean, there's a number of different packages, so what... Well, the lowest possible cable package that you can get. With. And then what about internet speeds? I mean, it all, you know, you bundle, there's different bundles you can get, there's different specials, there's, there's so many different variables that play into what an average bill is, because there's no average bill, per se. I think it was like you were offered before. I mean, the person who will be in contact will yeah, go over... Yeah, you can over, ask that question, they, you know, they can provide it, they will, I don't On the phone that. or in person, go over what the options are, and the choices. I mean, I think it's a fair no, point. No, I just, just that, that, what the no, no, no. I, no I'm saying it's a community. Right. It's, I think, a fair point. Uh, you know, cable, uh, cable companies, in a lot of ways, do a tremendous job. We've talked about that. A strength is not, you know, putting the rates up on a website. And, but that said, uh, as mentioned with with Ms. Leahy here, <coughs> you, anyone's going to have the opportunity to 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 look, to look at that. And what 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 everyone should have an opportunity to do. If, if, if only by reaching out, is to find out what packages are available, what are the costs, and that's a fair point, and that's something cable companies should be better at, uh, And but that when they're not, as mentioned, that's why government exists. Government exists to help people do what they can't necessarily do on their own. And so if you're not satisfied with the customer service aspect, as Bob said, you should contact Bob and he can act as an intermediary or possibly ask Comcast to come out and meet with the, the committee and yourself and just to see if there's something that's relevant for the committee. So those are all good questions, but, but again, in, in the nature of this relationship, it does work that they need to be licensed and as a result, they have, to ha they have a responsibility to the government to respond to the government protecting the public interest. And that's what Eileen will do. And as Bob says, that's usually enough. Eileen does a great job. Uh, but if it's not, then these folks are here to help you uh, with that, those discussions. But I'm just wondering if there's any way I can know if I am paying more for my service than other people in Congress are paying mentioned. for the same service. Why no. can't I find that out? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. The she I mean, says the she won't tell me. I think you have to ask. I think it depends. You have to understand when people sign up for services, there's always, there can be different packages at that I time. understand. I just want to know if for my particular package, Am I paying more or less or the same as everybody same else in Conway is paying for that same package? No, if you're, it's the same package. I would say no. If you pay, if you sign up at the same time and they're the same packaging, the same rates would apply. If it was the exact same package, oh, I, I don't know what deals. I mean, you know, there's always deals out there and there's always different things. But if you have the exact same speed, you know, you're not paying any more for your speed for your laptop or your internet than somebody else's. If you have 25 or 50, whatever it is, it's it's a price. There's one price, but I don't know what the average person Com in Conway Comcast pays. does have like special low income rates, right? I, right. Yeah, if, you you, if you qualify, um, they uh, anyway. Yeah, it sounds to me like you would like a salesperson to call you up and you want to ask them, is there any way I can lower my rates? What what would I have to do? We, we have tried that in Greenfield at the Comcast office. And they are particularly unresponsive. Yeah, but I'm saying, Eileen, you're right about many. I mean, that's, their, that's not really their bailiwick. But Ms. Leahy will be able, through the person she has contact, I have experienced this in many communities, mm -hmm. they'll be able to get you good answers. And your question would be not, is someone paying less? But it, it says, is there a discount that's that's made available that's not available to me? It's a fair question, yeah. and you should yeah. ask them that. Is that, you know, not are we paying less than, than Mary or Jim, but. Are, are there discounts that are provided for this, but that 
are not available to me now? That's a fair question, and they can, I think they can give you a fair answer on that. We will look forward yeah. to that. Yeah, and if you're not satisfied. Don't ask, you just wouldn't ask what's the average yeah. person paying in Greenfield. That's not going to get you an answer. Of course. That's the, that's the wrong question to ask. No, I understand. Just that. when you call, and the I'm person is going to. for the same package, do I pay the same thing as everybody else in Conway? Or am I, for some reason unknown to me, paying more? Or for some reason unknown to me, paying less? Cynthia. <laughs> I, I think that um, that Comcast is incredibly um, opaque about what their fees are. Absolutely. And you can't find them. They're not posted anywhere. There's no. no place where you can. Nothing. And when I went to um, try to reduce my bill, because I had, when, when, you know, I was one of those last mile properties, so we got Comcast recently, you know, a couple of years ago, and um, we had to do a triple play. Yeah. They would only do it if we had a triple play, because then they'd make enough money to make it worth their while to put it in. And so we went from paying $55 for really inferior satellite internet to paying $170 a month. Mm -hmm. And that really hurt. <laughs> um, what we really wanted was the internet, but we accepted these other services that we didn't really need and we didn't really want. So that we, because we had to get them in order to get high speed internet. And so I felt that that was very manipulative. And um, so when I went recently to reduce my bill, um, because it's been uh, two and a half, three years now, um, of paying that much money every month. Uh, the only thing I could do was eliminate the um, security system. Anything else that I did would actually increase my bill with less services. Because the cost of the individual things have these special prices that are given to you because you have a double play or a triple play. And, but you can't find those prices posted anywhere. You have to actually speak with a representative to find out what they are. And so that leads to a feeling amongst the public that maybe you're negotiating a different price with my neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's what you're expressing. It's just, it's very unclear to the public what your pricing structure is because you don't post it and you don't make it you don't make it easy to understand. Um, and I, I have to admit that when I signed up I was surprised by how much it cost because when I sat down with the rep, it looked like I was going to be spending $130 a month. But by the time all these extra fees and I'm still like I never watch sports on TV, and that regional sports fee mm -hmm. is more than the box, the cable box costs for something that I don't access. And we're talking about FCAT, and now I understand that the FCC is te telling Comcast and other providers that they can now charge us for something that was originally a community service that the, the cable companies agreed to in order to have access to the public, that was their payback as a, as a public service to provide this you know, community access. And now they want to charge us for it. So so there's, there's FCAT and there's <coughs> sports Thing that I don't want to have to pay for because I don't use it at all, and I don't understand why. And, and when I when I signed up, what I understood was that there were there were um, fees that were required by my government. This is what the rep 
implied that, that you were the one who was forcing them to charge us this fee. Uh, I assure you, it's not it's not our our right. cable committee. But, but right, 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 right. So, there is a small fee on your cable bill that does contribute to like four percent. That does contribute to FCAT. <coughs> but I think that they're going to be charging a fee like they do for mm. sports. I think that that's. We, we would have nothing to do with that. No, I don't. Yeah, no, just a brief comment. Uh, and all, all good comments. And, 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 oh, sorry. Can I ask what's your name is? Ma'am, what's your name? Oh, Cynthia Lawton Singer. S Cynthia Lawton Singer. Thank and you. I live on Roaring Brook Road. Yeah, no, no, all good comments. And I, my comments are that, as I said before, say, and opaque is a great word, that the cable company could be more forthright about what the pricing is. So it does seem, if I can say it to Eileen, it did seem like it, it, it would be helpful in, in Conway if uh, I, there was a day set up to have Comcast representatives come to Conway and to be available, you know, for a certain period of time to residents of the town to, to go over programming and options and <coughs> cost. I think that if, if that was done in a more global setting, uh, that would give people more confidence that, as stated, different answers aren't given to different people. I think it, it would be something that would be good for Comcast. Uh, I, I know in, in the past there, there are times that's done. It's not something that's common. It's not something Comcast likes, but, but I think it's a fair point. That's why we have a hearing. So that's something the committee can think of and speak to Comcast about, about having, uh, having a sort of a periodic uh, Comcast cable day where people can come and have those questions question the answer because I think that's a fair point. <coughs> also in the negotiations, um, you know, from a Comcast perspective, they'll want to look at what the cost of public education government support uh, under the Act Cable Act that needs to be taken into account. Uh, the committee feels that cost is it's not a high cost, but the benefit is tremendous uh, that comes from it. Uh, but, but that's this hearing's helpful. Uh, in the sense that people have expressed concerns about costs that relate to other Comcast services. And in the negotiations, that your committee will be able to point out that, it, sure, there's always concern about cost, but it's, it's certainly not limited to the, the, the cost of peg, peg access. Uh, that peg access is not a tax. It's a cost that Comcast uh, pays because it uses the public way using public property to provide services. And the federal law and regulations allows them to say in a bill, well, this is, this is what we, are, we Comcast have to pay to use the road. But, but it's not a tax. We don't, they don't collect it and provide it to us. They rather collect money from their subscribers and they're paying the town a relatively small portion of revenue in order to use the public way, which is mentioned, you have to buy or take, maintain, police, insure, and clean. So uh, <coughs> that's that relationship. I think that's helpful with respect to customer service. You can consider that in the license itself. But more importantly, I think if you could set up a day for Comcast to come out, I think that would be helpful because it would give them a chance to, uh, to assuage any concerns that, um, that it's, it's more of a, a bazaar than it is a fair pricing system. We did something like that when Comcast wired the rest of the town up to almost 100%. There were a great many new customers. I mean, all the way down Waitley Road and then Southern Conway and all, and, uh, all out Route 116 out towards Ashfield. There were a lot of new people that now could connect. And we had a, a day where people could come in and talk to a, to a Comcast salesperson. We actually had two salespeople. And it was very helpful because people could come in one-on-one. -on -one. It was sort of like going to a tax accountant. You know, they would sit down with somebody. They would say, this is my address. This is what I'm interested in. And they would talk to them about whether or not they would have to pay. In other words, if they had a really long driveway that might cost a little bit of extra money to wire them all the way to their house 
or if they were right on the road, and they could they could schedule the Comcast construction crew to come if they were ready to, to get connected. And a great many people got good one-on-one -on -one service with a Comcast rep <coughs> as, as they as we had this this one day. And and that sounds like what you're proposing here, because for somebody to come here to Comcast, they wouldn't want to stand up and talk to a group because everybody has got a different situation. They would want to pull up your bill, they would want to look at your account, and they would want to talk to you about how you might be able to lower your bill. Uh, hold on, we just... I just, um, yeah, again, Tom Burke, um, just talking about price, um, I had the triple play, it was uh, 210 a month. And um, I, I've been here for a while, and I had the similar, each year it would go up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm primarily internet, that's primarily what I need. Uh, it's a necessity now. You can't, you know, uh, shopping malls are going away. Uh, and you order everything, you do your business through the internet. You can't, you, especially out here, you can't, you can't really get along. If you have a small business, you need the internet. You have a kid. You have a kid, you know, everything, yeah, everything's internet. So it's really internet. Uh, whether you get it through the to, through the cable or, or not, but but my my own experience is I called up Comcast. Um, I, I I got you know I I, I I'm like you I, I got pretty quick service to it, but I, I complained about the price on it and um, and they and they, they uh, gave me a better price. Uh, um, there was a few things I dropped. Um, the thing I noticed is um, you know we have a, uh, three kids in a, in a house and we each had our, our you know there was maybe three TVs there's a charge in each of the television and then they're charging <coughs> for the, the the router modem and the router modem I don't know the, the each of the extra um, uh, cable hookups for your TVs maybe I don't know nine dollars or something a month um, and that kind of adds a lot but but the router modem is the one that 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 really what is that about maybe twelve dollars a month or something I, I don't know so I don't know maybe that, 15 but, then, but yeah. you know you're paying about hundred and forty you know for a year you're paying about hundred and forty dollars <coughs> so if you were to buy oh, sorry sorry if, if you were to buy a uh, uh, you know go and buy your own router modem it's about a hundred dollars <coughs> so in one year they're paying for it so every year after that, you know, it's a business. They, you know, they have a lot of things they got to pay for. That's not the problem. I'm just kind of sharing my own experience with that. I bought my own router modem, and that certainly helped. But for me, it's not about the television. It's not about the choices on a TV. It's really about the internet service. That's that's what it comes down to for me. <coughs> Did you want to comment on that, or you had your hand up before? No, no, no. Okay. I yeah, I I just having um, we had a rep who came to our house um, so we had the one to one sit down with the rep so we had that but but what I'm talking about is there's no place that you can see what Comcast charges for what services no, and you can't you do understand have, there's no I wonder if it's not yearly to all customers with the fees on the back. it doesn't have the, bill, the, the letter gets sent out has all the, um, it has all the prices because I have to sit through these price changes and we have to prove everything. And it gives all the oh, channels. Yes. We have to, so we, we're all part of it. So you do get something. Once what you don't year. get are what the packages are and the bundles because They're those awesome. are always changing. So we can't, we can't do that every year. Every year, and it probably just came out a few weeks ago, it's all the pricing. It's right there. It tells you what the extra, the modems cost, the, the extra boxes cost. And everything. And when you think about a bundle, think of it this way. This is going to sound like the crazy example. Of I was at Walgreens yesterday. And I wanted to buy a box of candy. I was buying some uh, Swedish fish, and they were four for four dollars. But I only wanted one box. So I got one box. I had to pay a dollar forty-nine or something. So they didn't give me a dollar. I didn't get to pay for a dollar because that was part of the bundle. So as a bundle, it was cheaper. You bought in the bundle. But if you want, just want one sir, one box, you had to pay the full price. So. Bundles are just cheaper all over because you're getting more services, and that's what it is. So, and there are and there's always different options out there. There's bundles are always changing. There's always different specials, but every year you do every customer gets a price listing from Comcast of what the cost of everything is, and it has all the fees that are going to be on there. What the, the path to the FRC that you were talking about for the money you get that's on there. I think it's a nine cents or whatever it is, but that's on the bill. So it, it, it's all there for you to see. And you should have just gotten that. I think they were mailed out November 19th, to be honest with you, so you would have already received it. But by all means, call up 
and just ask and say, what can you help me do to lower my bills or anything I can do to lower my bills? These are my concerns. This is really what I need. This is what I need. Can you help me just get what I need? And most folks are really good about that, so. I, I did do that. And, and when I, I, what I really needed was the internet and all the other things. It ended up being more to just have internet mm -hmm. than to have internet and a phone and a TV and, you know, because, because of I do discount. find that really surprising. Uh, well, it is surprising. <laughs> I thought it was surprising. I thought it was very surprising. How but fast is speed do you get for the agent? Do you have very fast speed? No. No, we, we have one of the lower speeds because I heard, you know, one of the tech shows I listened to said most people don't need those right, really yeah. fast speeds. So I'm very happy with the speed that we've got, but, you know, it's not mm -hmm. Might be out of place because I'm not a Cottonwood resident, but on internet speeds, I had a legacy plan where I, my upload and download were pretty solid. My upload was great. When I upgraded my download speed, the upload speed went down a fifth. <laughs> my upload is horrible. And I upload a lot because I'm a video producer. Most of us don't, but yes. That was a little eight. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just saying. <Yeah. laughs> Roy. Forgive me because I don't know anything that transpired, but I it sounds like there's been a lot of discussion about the cost. Am yeah. I correct in that? Folks, I don't like to account for it. Roy, you're invited to talk about whatever you want. What happens, so, I, I, I Eileen's want not here to hear us complain about cost, and there's no. nothing we can do in our franchise yeah, right. about cost. We don't have authority, but it's fine to hear about it. Yeah, you can talk about it. Yes. Your email said, I just saw your email. I was oh. eating there. I'm like, I dropped everything and Thank came you. down here because I just come down and <laughs> what you think. Tell Comcast what you think. So I may have a slightly different perspective than folks, and that's because I'm in the tech business, I'm in the tech world, and I suffered with greatly with um, you name it, and I whatever I could pull out of the air. Let's put it that way. Royal is at the end of Whaley Road. Okay. So so here's here's the thing that folks I think need to realize: it costs a certain amount of money to bring a line and service and have the repair guys and have that whole infrastructure so they can provide you with service. So even if you're going to get some basic minimal level of service, it's going to cost something. And it'll cost more here than it will in more populated areas where their costs per node are certainly less. Now, there's a lot, this is what I'm concerned about, if I could have a few minutes here. And you are? Uh, I mean. Eileen? Eileen yeah. is, is the government rep. She's the one that, that all the towns deal with for Comcast. She works for Comcast. Oh, so Doreen is not. She was a salesperson. She's a right. Salesperson. Okay. She, so, she worked for it. So I think that across the country, and I, because I, I, in this business, I talk to a lot of people. You don't, most cable operators are pretty much exactly like Comcast in the way they do business. And what do they want to do? They want to get you consuming their services so you really like them and don't want to be without them. And when they raise them to some other level, which seems like, oh my God, how can they do this? Well, you know, you're not, you're going to feel, you'll understand why it is they're inflicting, inflicting your pain. This is, this is my interpretation of it. I will say that when I made the call, because we're two years into the contract, yeah, you know, contract was up. I made the call. So what did I wind up doing? I wound up going to their highest level of service because my price didn't change, which is, and their highest level is it's called gigabit speed. Now, I thought, you know, most people think, well, I don't need that gigabit, but guess what? And I'm ha I can say it because I really believe that Comcast sees the writing on the wall. They know that people are. Uh, uh, dry, you know, they want a la carte for everything. One of my streaming services streaming I'm service. talking yep. about. Yep. So because you have that speed, I didn't need the extra boxes. Because I could, with a Roku stick that you can buy for 30 bucks, 
if you have the right TV, you can stream <coughs> out of out of the out of their mode. Now, I want to just say a few words about because I bought my own modem also. When you get up to the gigabit speed, what you're going to find are going to be quite expensive modems. And I went from well, it's cool. I got my own modem, provided a that I don't have a lightning strike, I don't have a power surge or something where it fries the thing and I gotta go out and buy another one. When you rent it from Comcast, especially the gigabit style modem, <coughs> if that thing fries, call Comcast and they'll bring you another modem. So, I mean, it's really, and the set-top boxes, I'm, I'm convinced, and those are the $10 boxes that go with each set, I'm convinced it's a wash for them because that hardware costs them money. They're out there replacing it. So in some ways, they'd even rather have you speed as long, uh, stream as long as you upgrade to the speeds that let it. So I don't want to take any more time, and I, but I do want to tell Comcast that I, for one, am thankful to have service finally after all these years. I know that there's others who feel that I do, and I also feel, let me end, that I worry about what's going to happen at the end of my two-year commitment now, where I don't know how much farther you can go with throwing more at it, or, or you're just going to be extracting more money from me, unless, and I will say this, unless 5G comes along and acts as some kind of real competition to kind of moderate the price. And I'm not a fan of 5G, because I think it'll fry our brains, but that's besides the point. <laughs> okay. So, Beth, did you want to talk? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry I'm late. I'm oh. Beth Gersman from, I was just at a planning board meeting, so that's fine. So I'm not, I'm not sure if what I'm inserting here is the appropriate moment, but I'm really just here to say that um, uh, up until a few years ago, I had dial-up, you know, dial-up service only. I live on Music Road, and um, when I, I moved away for five years, when I moved back, we got in touch with Comcast, and they, you know, we could run cable to our house, which we hadn't done previously. We had turned that down stupidly before, but then we got a chance to do it, and I'm delighted with the service I have. The pricing I have is great. My internet speed is fantastic. I'm very happy. Thank you. With Comcast. <laughs> and I now have my cell phones through Comcast, too, and I'm really happy about that. Because that is really expensive. Yeah, it's okay. That is all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> I have heard about people about Comcast is getting into the cell phone business. I don't know much about it. It's yeah. not our business, but but right. it is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Just a follow up. Did so you far. mind sharing uh, what the what the price of the gigabyte modem that you bought? Right I didn't buy it. Oh, you, you got it from Comcast. So, yeah, okay. Thirteen yeah. bucks a month. Yep. Okay. And it, it my experience great. with that with Comcast, and this isn't a plug, but uh, um, I've owned my own modem in the past, and. And sometimes they start, they don't work so well, and I have to go buy another one. Mm -hmm. I have a Comcast modem now, and maybe once a year, I get an email from Comcast saying, I think you're due a new modem. And I drive to Greenfield, I bring them my old modem, they give me a new modem completely for free, I just plug it back in, and it's faster and much, and better. And, and, and so, I don't you know whether that is. How do you get on that list? Uh, uh, just go, just uh, take your modem to Greenfield. I never heard them call the, me up saying you're doing the modem. Run to the select board. <laughs> no, I don't board. think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, take your modem to Greenfield and say it doesn't work. I, I shouldn't say that to you, Ellie. But, um, you know, uh, I find them amazing when I go there. Uh, no questions asked. I, I, I lose my clicker, you know, you, you know, where I put the damn thing. I go to the Greenfield and I say, I lost my clicker. They say, here's a new one. And they give me a new one. You know, they don't charge me anything. They're more than happy to have a happy customer, I think. Uh, uh, you know, Comcast gets a lot of bad rap, but I, to me, you know, when, when my Comcast connection is not working well and I call up their tech support, people are breaking their arms to try to figure out how to fix it. I mean, it's really amazing how hard those techs work to, and I'm sure they're getting rated and all of that, but you know, I, you know, finally I want to say, okay, let me just, let me just try it. You know, it's okay. I'm going to hang up now. You know, it's like, please, it's okay. So, anyway. uh, anybody else want to talk? Yeah, I actually have a comment. Um, 
So I'm Bill Harvey, sir. I live over on East Guinea. Um, so I'm in the part of town where basically there's no cell service at all. Not, I know some of you also have this issue, but uh, uh, we didn't have uh, any cell, we didn't have any cable. Um, now that we have Comcast, my wife can actually work from the house. Um, she has a computer job. And you, we had a two-way satellite before, and it, it, it was OK. But the thing is, with the latency to go up to the satellite and back, there was a pretty significant time delay. And if you're just doing email and stuff, that's fine. But if you're trying to run a, a virtual, through a virtual private network, it's some kind of encrypted system for work, then it slowed it down to, to the point where it was pretty much unusable. Um, but now, of course, with, Kate, with Comcast, we have, she can, we have normal high speed. She can do anything. She, she can pretty much do anything at home she can do from her desk. So that's good. The other thing is, I already mentioned cell phones. So this is a, this is a Comcast provider for this phone. So even though there's no cell service in the house, because these things will default to Wi-Fi, I can now make cell phone calls and get cell phone calls from my house. These are the, I'm a computer guy. I grew up as a, I was a software engineer. This is the first smartphone I've owned because up until now I had a flip phone because there was no real reason to pay for a smartphone when I didn't get cell service more than 50% of the time. So I've been very happy with the Comcast service. Now I will admit we have only been wired for a year so we've got all the introductory, we have all the introductory good rates, and we will indeed see how that goes once that all expires. Can you share what that is? What is that introductory rate? <laughs> you, you know, you're going to think I'm being cagey. I have no idea because I don't pay the bills. <laughs> My wife does all of our bill stuff. No idea. Okay? Sure. I literally haven't the foggiest clue. But, but I will tell you that when I was, uh, when we had two-way satellite, there were three tiers of speed for that. And um, we were paying for the middle tier, which also had a bandwidth cap of about five gig, I think, a month. You can't watch, if you watch one movie, you've used up most of that. So we certainly didn't stream anything. Um, and then once, once you exceeded that, then you got, then the speed went down and you got relatively nasty notices periodically. And again, and again, my wife couldn't do any work from the house with that. Yeah. And again, as a software engineer, I used to download a lot of software. And you know, if I got an entire uh, new version of some operating system, I'd have to do it at, at night when the, uh, you know, the, the satellite system had a cheaper period, like after 1 a.m. or something. So I was always up all night long <laughs> to download stuff. So now I don't have that problem anymore. So all that's very good. Um, so I'm very happy that they're here. And but the cell is the Wi-Fi. That's really the good Wi-Fi signal is really what makes the, the cell phone work. Right. You know, I've been, I've been, you know, I have AT and T, but, but, I, but, but the Wi-Fi is what makes. Wi-Fi I will work. say I travel a lot, and that, um, so the way the Comcast Wi-Fi, uh, I'm sorry, the Comcast mm -hmm. cell works is that basically that contract with whoever the, I assume whoever the local provider in that area is that they can get a good deal with. But I've, been, I've gotten excellent speeds and connectivity almost everywhere, except weirdly in the middle of Rochester. You would think that would be good. But in any case, most of the places I go, it's been great. So I, I don't have any complaints so far about the cell, system, the, the cell service with these guys. Um, but, you know, but we'll see. So you know, we'll just have to see how it all goes. Where I live in Northern Conway, uh, we have no cell service. And uh, it's. And, and, and I went to AT&T and complained, and, and they gave me a discount on buying what's called a mini tower. And it's a little, little box, and I plug it into my Comcast or Wi-Fi router, and it provides cell service in my house. <laughs> and, and, uh, so, and so now I, I have cell service all over, over my house. And, you know, and now it's cell service coming through my, my mini tower through my Wi-Fi connection you know, in the Comcast. But my phone doesn't know that. My phone just sees the cell tower. I look and says, oh, I have cell service. And it works great. Right. Well, I just want to comment on that because the absence of cell service 
and your dependence on the cable suggests that there's an emergency uh, condition where you're high and dry. And that doesn't go away. So if you're dependent on that cable, <coughs> and it's your phone, and it's your internet, and you're using it for cell service, and the wire goes down, you're shit out of luck. And that's the reality of rural lifestyle. So, so, so let, let me so read another answers. letter. Oops, I'm sorry. No, I'm just going to say, so the only answer I have is to go up the hill and get sick. And get sick. Yeah, I use a cell phone amplifier, which is sort of what that thing is, but what that, I'm limited to a room in the house where the cell phone works. Yeah, yeah. And I've got an unsightly thing and wires and stuff outside the house, and it's about $400 worth of stuff to protect from lightning and everything else. But can I just add one thing? Because there was an article just recently, um, so the national sort of averages of just internet, if you strip everything down into what people around the country are paying, for a, a basic internet, now I don't know if it's a 30 down and five up, or if it's 100 down and 20 up, I don't know what that is, but it varies. Uh, what's that? It probably varies. Yeah, so the number was at lowest $65 plus taxes and fees, up to about 113 plus taxes and fees. And I think when you add on, you know, some amount for a phone, some amount for your TV packages, you probably see Comcast as somewhere right, at the higher end of that ballpark, but in that ballpark. I never said, finished what I was going to say before. I got sidetracked as usual. Uh, but between the high-speed two-way satellite connection mm. and our Verizon connection, who, by the way, I truly hate, uh, we can talk about that another time, uh, we were paying probably 200 something a month, maybe more. Mm. I know that whatever we're paying now, it's actually less than we were paying. Now again, you know, after the rates change, as we're no longer the subscribers, we'll see how that goes. But we may, we may try to drop some services, and we may discover that that doesn't work so well. We'll find out. I don't know. But, but at this point, it actually is saving me money, not, uh, not the other direction. Uh, I was in the same boat where w when I had I had a satellite dish. I had Verizon phone, and I had uh, a, 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 and I had a, 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 a cable television dish, you know, Dish TV or whatever it was. I forget, you know. I had two dishes and I had and a Verizon, and, and, and the total of those were two hundred and fifty or three hundred dollars a month. Right. And and yes, I, I, about five years ago, when when they wired my house up in Northern Conway, the introductory price was about a hundred dollars a month. And it was basically everything you could imagine you would ever want. And now, now five years later, the prices are going up, and I have to go to my wife and say, you know, we really don't watch Showtime very much. And she says, no, Dexter is on Showtime. And, and that's, that's what you face in trying to drop some of those cable channels that you've come to really like. And you make those decisions. Go ahead. Can I just make one comment about pricing? And we're certainly not here to be apologists for Comcast as members of the Cable Advisory. Uh, and you've heard loud and clear what it is that we can influence and what we can't influence. And clearly, our top priority is the two-way broadband out of the school and out of the office. That's our priority, and that's what we can write into the contract. But there's a certain amount of volatility in the cable industry that we're not even aware of until we lose a channel. Because Comcast has to negotiate with each of those content providers. So whether it's Showtime or you know, any of the premium channels, they're in negotiations constantly with those people, with the weather channel, you know, et cetera, to keep those channels active. So there's a certain amount of inherent volatility, but I will say this, what you get with a provider like a Comcast is stability, and they are all about a consistent uh, service provision. And what Bob is saying is true. You call them now because they, for earlier, you know, 10, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, they got a bad rap because they were unresponsive. And I think if you look at the way Comcast has behaved since then, they're very proud of their record of responding to 
you know, consumer complaints, but they were not earlier in their history. But to your point about owning the equipment or leasing the equipment, it's all about uptime. You call them and you say, my modem has crapped out, they will replace it. You call them and say, I got a problem, they'll say, well, is it your modem? It's your issue. It's not our issue, because they can see what they're sending you. So there are a lot of pluses and minuses, but the volatility and the pricing, it's between you and a salesperson. In my own personal experience, I have found them to be very flexible and be very open. And from our standpoint, we have everything. And I'll tell you, the, the big plus for me is the security system, because I felt very vulnerable. I have a lot of gear. I felt very, very vulnerable. And that was the big plus plus gigabit internet. But I, I personally couldn't be happier and it makes life possible. And when we came into the community seven years ago, I talked to Bob before I made my final offer and signed the papers saying, is this coming? And I was in disbelief that the town would have allowed Comcast to only wire a percentage of the town. I couldn't believe in the modern age, in the 21st century, that that was possible. But we've come a long way. Could, there's no such thing as allowed. We, you know, it's not like we can- I understand. Or, you know, take them to court, anyway, yeah. Uh, back, when, I don't know when the girl electrified the cable, but happened in the 1930s, but that was a project of the federal government. And we don't have that support to bring internet. It's It's, but, but yeah, it is. So our federal government has turned cable regulations over to the FCC. They consider it a luxury. They don't consider it, you know, a utility like water and, and, and right, phone but service. But as, that is, everybody here has So you need to write to your senator. You can't, you and, can't live today without, without uh, We have no, no disagreement. You know? So, yeah, so it really is a necessity today, just like electricity. So elections have consequences, and you should be worried about the people that are currently being stuck in the FCC. And the oh, kinds of things they care me, about. Believe me, I am. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so. believe me, I am. Yeah. Sharon Krupa from Blue Row. <clears throat> I think it might be geared more towards you. You're talking about channels. Um, years ago, we used to get Boston channels, like NBC, ABC, CBS. <clears throat> and I had talked to Ron Hawks about that years ago when we lost them. And he says that's when they had the biggest complaints, is when they lost the Boston channels. I mean, we get a little blurb on, in, on our local news about what's going on in the state house or whatever. But I've noticed Greenfield is getting the Boston channels. Amherst is getting the Boston channels. We're in the middle. We're not getting the Boston channels. It's not like it's a premium, something you can negotiate. I mean, these are just basic channels that are out there that other towns are getting, but we're not. Now, why? I mean, I, years ago, they put new cable up on my road. I came home one day, it was double vision. I called them, eventually sent a tech down. He said, oh, you're gonna be getting the same lineup as Greenfield. We're not, you know, we're not getting those Boston channels. I mean, it'd be nice to know what's going on in the state, even though, you know. I agree, we get Springfield channels. We right. don't get the Boston channels. And you know, we used to NBC. get, we used to get, I mean, it's not like it's a premium channel. It's available because Greenfield's getting it, Amherst is getting it, we're in the middle, and we're not getting it. You must just be from where you're fed out of what head end is, I'm guessing. I, mean, I, I don't know, I, we don't, those are decisions that are made. I don't I, I don't know why some areas get it, it just must be from where they're being fed at. The head end where everything comes into and goes out, there's different head ends that serve different areas, so <clears throat> Greenfield and Amherst may be in the same head end, yeah. Well, <coughs> I'm guessing. Uh, you know, it's a fair, it's a fair, it's a good point, a fair question, uh, and that's you know there there are places in the state where that's been a battle. Now, a lot of it is un is regulated, and without without any concern for what people want, through federal regulation and must carry and uh, what channels can be shown in what areas. But it's a fair question, so I think it would be helpful, Eileen, if. If you could have someone at Comcast who can get back to the committee to, describe, to explain, you know, if uh, what the channels are the, of the major networks 
and I guess Sportsnet, where they you know, uh, you know, uh, yeah. ABC, NBC, CBS, and something. Yeah, and that was against Springfield. But you make a good point if you know if you have Greenfield and Amherst, uh, and so Ernest and Northfield, they get them. Yeah, so I think it's fair to, to if you could have someone report to the committee as to what channels are received, and uh, if and if they're uh, if if they're not Boston channels, uh, is if there's a reason why under federal you know the federal requirements. I know there are places that in what far west mass that lost Boston channels. Uh, these are for charter time Warner systems now charter, uh, and they were getting New York <laughs> in Albany, and they had no connection to Albany if you live in uh, North Adams or uh, Williamstown, uh, and you know they had their uh, congressman and the senator and folks in there fighting, and 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 there's some channel there are some communities in southern southwest Massachusetts that were getting Connecticut, and again, you know there's. No, with no relationship. So after we find out from Eileen and Comcast, you know, what channels and is there, or, or is there a choice and can Boston channels be available? You know, can people may split and what they want to see. Right. Then, then at that point, the you know, committee could look further in that. They, they, they can't regulate it, but as a cable committee, it's a fair, fair point to, to look into. Um, so you're just looking for NBC, ABC, CBS, and Boston? Yeah. I mean, by show of hands. So do, would people prefer yeah, Boston? I prefer Boston. 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 Yeah. Who would, maybe Bobby, if you can ask folks, folks, what if they prefer Boston or Springfield channels? And just remember, yeah. just to be clear, this doesn't—you you can't negotiate no, no. the channels. You're going to no, no, no. Like, no, no, no. I know somebody walking out here saying, yeah. "We're negotiating that we're going to get ABC, CBS, and NBC out of Boston." Yeah. No, no, we can't. We can't I'll negotiate it. Answer. I'll get you an answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's. But there's no, this is just a, you know, it's, it's things serve two purposes. As I said, there's no authority by the town. It can't, it can't force or try to force. It have, and no way would it affect the license. But since this is also an opportunity to be heard on cable issues, even outside of the authority, but it's clear it's outside, that let's, you know, you're taking that opportunity. But it, it, it can't be, it wouldn't be a discussion in cable license negotiations. It can't be a basis upon granting or not granting, and it, you know, implicitly or explicitly. Uh, I, I would suspect, so the head end is where all the channels go. Yes. And then out of the head end, it goes to your house. And there's head ends, Broadway, Massachusetts. There's a head end in Springfield, there's a head end in Springfield. What's the head end here? Do you know? Do you know? Okay. So, that dictates the channels that come in and go out. Yeah. How that, and again, that's way above my, that's right. my uh, balance. Yeah. But I can ask people who run the head and how determination or how the channels come in and go out. So you, you guys are really patient. We've got. Yeah. I think we need to wrap this up. I I did promise that I would read one more letter. Sure. So, when you're done yeah. with that, a very brief ending. When you're Great. done. Okay. Yeah. So so these are people that didn't come. This is from a fellow named Peter Martin. Uh, and Peter said, uh, I'm unable to make the meeting tonight, but I have an issue that I hope you can address. Comcast does not provide backup for their phones. So, and like battery backup. No power, no phone. Uh, without cell phone coverage, it leaves me with no way to communicate. So I think they should be required to provide backup, and I know it is available. They have it, but they charge a lot for it. This should not be the case when we're already paying for an unreliable system. So that, that's, so that, that's, this is from a, a Conway resident. I told him I would read this. It's hard for me to exactly justify it, but yes. So the answer is get a princess phone. It's unpowered. Yeah. I, I'll that's it. That's the answer. I mean, if you're using a, a, wire, a cordless phone, it's, it, it runs on battery. You run out of the battery, you don't have power. It's not going to recharge. Ask anybody from the phone company, you should have a princess phone. You can plug it in outside your house, you can plug it right in, yeah, and it'll always work. If there's copper, yeah, yeah, if you want yeah. battery backup for a cable box, for, for, for the phone, right. for, for, for right. the, so the so telephone the, box. Yes, Comcast is a phone provider, it doesn't matter what kind of old non yeah. phone if, is plugging the next. Right, if, if the modem goes down, he's so, down. Anyway, so I hope that was from Peter Martin, you know, I, I told him that I would make sure Eileen got his input. So uh, it's battery backup for cell phone he wanted? To I think it's battery backup for his phone. Okay. Phone service. That's why you have the battery in your mind. 
So, so Bill, did you want to close? No, just very quick, just a final comment. Um, two, two things, getting back to Comcast. Um, they, in a sense, they do a particularly good job on customer service, given they're a monopoly. You know, there are so many businesses we now deal with that have some competition, like satellite. There's two satellite companies left, uh, and their customer service is horrendous. So given the fact they're uh, a virtual monopoly in terms of cable, not in terms of other video providers, but cable and also fiber line internet, in a sense what's remarkable is that, as some people said, that they do as well as they do. It's easy to be a monopoly and say, why do we care about folks? So that's to their credit. To their credit, as I mentioned, there are local folks who come here, government affairs people, who come, who answer, answer calls and respond to the town and come to meetings, and that, that, that's uh, that based on the laws that exist. And that's something that's unique. Uh, and we heard here tonight uh, a number of people who were very positive about their service and, uh, and uh, other aspects of it, and other people who had concerns, which are le le legitimate concerns. What the committee will be doing, and we'll meeting with Eileen tomorrow, is we'll continue to discuss and try to figure out if we can work out a cable license that provides the adequate support to provide public educational government community programming, which Chris so articulately discussed. And you know, when we're looking at capital dollars on that, we, you know, let's say, well, pick a number. We have 80 cents a month, 70 cents a month. You know, not a lot of dollars, uh, <coughs> particularly in comparison to some of the issues of cost and everything else that was raised here. So what I will, and the committee will be asking Comcast, is that they support community television, which means so much here, at, you know, on, on, instead of capital, you know, less than a dollar uh, a month. Uh, which seems like a small amount that people would be willing to pay. And we hope and I expect that Comcast will come to the table and say, you know what, there's an interest here, there's a need, it's a good program, and let's work something out that works. And I think the discussion here today about the various costs and that could be up and down, I think that put it in perspective that uh, it's, it's a small amount of funding that Conway needs to be part of FCAT to provide a valuable uh, service in a world, as you indicated, Chris, where media sources are disappearing uh, and cable television and local community events can be there. So we'll, we'll be meeting with Eileen and continue to speak with her. I think today's discussion helped put that in perspective in terms of cost and in terms of importance. And for that, I thank everyone. And I thank Eileen and Comcast because they said uh, in the modern world, uh, like I said, if you want customer service, you, I, you'll go to Caldor or Bradley, you still don't get it. Uh, but here with Comcast, uh, they're here to discuss it, and, and I appreciate that and thank them for that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.